I'm Charles Scott King, WNEW News. At nine minutes past ten, time for the Sears Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight is a story of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. What's that? Take your seats. What is it? I don't know, but fasten your seat belts. The ship is quivering. It, it may be an earthquake. If this ship falls over on its side, we've had it. Hey, rain! The sky was clear as we came through. Well, you can see for yourself. It's still clear above the trees. What kind of weather do they have here? The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Yeah, that was about two weeks after Dad had his stroke. Did he have high blood pressure? Don't know. He's doing a little better now, but he can't speak too well. Has trouble walking too, doesn't he? Yeah, it's truly a shame. You have high blood pressure? I don't know. I feel okay. I'm not high strung like Dad. Whether you're high strung or low strung, whether you feel just fine or not, has nothing to do with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is a major risk factor in stroke and heart attack, but it has no obvious symptoms. It can only be detected by a simple, quick, and painless test. The American Heart Association also wants you to know that black Americans, as a group, are more likely to have high blood pressure than whites. We don't know why. But high blood pressure can usually be controlled if it's detected. For more information, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. This is Richard Widmark. Do you hear that? It's silence. We're in deep, dark space. And we hear nothing but... silence. But there's a spaceship silently coming toward us. We can make out the name on its bow. The Omega. And there's a man looking out a forward port... He's in a vehicle that is moving almost with the speed of light. Yet he's as comfortable as if he were in an easy chair at home chatting with friends. I thought we were supposed to be the first ones up here. We are, Sloan. Then what's all this junk mean? He's right, Austin. There's a lot of space junk outside. Let me see, Stuart. Maybe it's from something we launched earlier, Sloan. Maybe, Ruth. No. No, we haven't sent a ship this far into space before. Somebody sure has, Austin. Look at all the junk. Maybe it came from that planet ahead. That planet's dead as it can be, Commander. No atmosphere around it. No nothing. We haven't seen the other side of it yet, Sloan. But it doesn't rotate, Austin. It'll be as dead on the other side as it is on this. Oh, speaking of dead, I'd better water the algae so we can keep breathing. I'll help, Bonnie. Uh, Stuart, try to reach headquarters by radio again. We'll call, Commander. Omega calling space agency. Come in, please. Omega calling space agency. Come in. <coughs> Afraid it's the same story, Commander. It still doesn't work. Stu and I have even been outside, Commander. We've gone over the transmitting system with a fine-tooth comb. The agency isn't getting through to us, Austin. But maybe we're getting through to them. Send in hourly reports anyway, Stuart. We'll go, Commander. <laughs> A spaceship with a crew of five, including two women. A radio that doesn't work. Space junk that nobody can account for. Oxygen supplied by algae. A dead planet that doesn't revolve and has no air around it. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Your hosts, Lorne Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson with stories about love hate 
and related things. Richard Widmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Then There Were None, by Ted Sherdeman. Our star, Keith Andes. Dear, today I found the bedroom suite of my dreams at a great price. That's a coincidence. I found one that has all the features. Well, mine has authentic country styling. So does mine. Does yours have a beautiful 26-step finish? Nothing but, and I get a choice of 13 different pieces. All built to last for a long time? Yes, with sturdy tongue and groove construction and dovetail jointed drawers. Is yours Sears, Sears open, open hearth bedroom, bedroom furniture? furniture? Sears open hearth bedroom collection. Expert craftsmanship at a reasonable price. Select from 13 different pieces. Now at most Sears retail stores. Darling, I'm a mattress who knows what to wear. Solid color placale sheets from Sears Medley Collection, of course. This gorgeous sheet I'm wearing speaks for itself. The color is called Indian Sand. Isn't that stunning? I wear sheets of royal blue, lemon yellow. Sears has a dazzling selection of up to 24 colors. And the fit? Well, just look. I can't understand why mattresses wear anything but these smooth permapress sheets. Honestly, darling, I wouldn't wear anything else. Sizes from twin to king in most Sears retail stores and in the catalog. Sears Budget Shop has a vested interest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirt and pants sets in sizes 8 to 18. Styled just right for spring. They're romantic flounce dresses topped by vests. Tunic pantsuits coupled with vests. Also the tunic and skirt smartly finished with a vest. The vest, the season's fashion basic. Lots of exciting print and solid color combinations. So you can be choosy. Invest in fashion. Invest in value. Vested dresses and vested skirt and pants sets in the Budget Shop at most larger Sears retail stores. I can't believe they can do it for $19.99. Installed? The aluminized Sears muzzler is only $19.99 installed. And listen to the muzzler promise. Sears promises that the muzzler will last as long as you own your American-made car. Or return it for refund or replacement free. And if Sears installed it, they'll install the new one free. Well, you can't beat that. I think that's fantastic. It's a great promise. The muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, 99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears tire and auto centers. The spaceship Omega speeds silently through the stillness of space. Its commander, Austin Baker, peers out a port at the dead, dark planet they're approaching. His attention is taken by Ruth Beatty as she offers him a pill. Time for dinner, Commander. Here you go. <laughs> I keep thinking this is an aspirin tablet. I can't get used to just taking a pill instead of having a meal. Yeah, me either, Sloan. But I must say, pills take up a lot less space aboard this craft. Takes up a lot less space in your stomach, too. I'm with Sloan Overton. I'll never get used to them. Yeah, they're convenient. Oh, may I have some water, please, Ruth? Oh, sure. Here. Uh, me, too. Thanks. Thank you, Ruth. You're welcome. These meal pills rob you of all the things you associated with eating. Like what? Conversation? I never conversed anyway. Usually read the paper, the ads in a cereal box, or watched TV. Oh, you must have been a scintillating dinner companion. You don't get command of a spaceship like the Omega by being a scintillating dinner companion. Maybe not, Sloan, but the thing that really worries me about these pills is where do I get the bulk? The fiber I'm supposed to have. It's in the pills. This little thing? Not a chance. Hey, Commander. Yes, Stuart. To the left of the planet. The entire left side is bathed in light. We'll be at the lighted edge in a moment. Want me to circle around it? Yes. You and Bonnie keep an eye out for launching sites. And Ruth, prepare to make photographs. We'll call Commander. I'll slow the craft down and pass around the lighted edge. Same altitude, Commander? I think so, Stuart. I see the source of the light, Commander. So do I, Stuart. It's, it's that star. It looks dead down there, sir. Yeah. So it seems, Sloan. Well, what's that planet nearby? Well, it uh, it doesn't show on any of our charts, sir. For that matter, neither did this dead one. Well, that near planet must have atmosphere around it, Austin. It appears so, Stuart. And it rotates. That, that star must be its sun. Bonnie and I have seen no launching sites that could even come close to putting out all that space junk. We've seen no launching sites, period. The planet below us is dead. Well, let's have a closer look at that nearby planet. There's a lot of 
cloud cover, Austin. Yes, Ruth. But through it, you can see land masses and long stretches of what appear to be seas. Or water of some kind. And both ends of that planet appear to be covered with snow and ice. Like our polar caps, Sloane. Those are seas, Commander. Yeah, appear to be. It's very blue, isn't it? Hmm, one of the signs of a breathable atmosphere. Oh, by the way, the algae beds are doing beautifully, Commander. <laughs> Since they provide the oxygen we breathe, Bonnie, let's be grateful. Oh, I am. I even made some soup out of some of it. Ah, uh, at my urging, Austin. I can't stand those pills either, Commander. And they're more nourishing than algae soup. And don't taste as bad. How do you know, Sloane? It hasn't finished cooking yet. At least Ruth will get her bulk. No, right now, get to your cameras. I want a full record of this planet we're approaching. Wilco, Commander. Wilco. I'll take over the controls now, Stuart. Right, sir. We'd better slow our descent. Uh, give me some forward jets. We'll call, Commander. We're slowing, but not enough. More, Stuart. That's strange. We're at a uh, 100 kilometers now, Commander. I'm trying to hold it that slow. 95, 94, 93. More forward jet power, Stuart. Losing Sloan. 88, 87. We're caught in that planet's gravity field. 83, 82, 81, 80. I'll try full power, sir. Go ahead, Stuart. What are the readings, Sloan? 75, 74, 73. Kill the jets. Switch to atomic power, Stuart. I'll try to turn the ship. 65, 64, 63. The power is useless. What can we do, sir? The only thing we can, land. Use the power to land tail first. Now, if I can turn this thing... 57, 56, 55... There's a city below. See it, Bonnie? I can see vehicles, Ruth. They're on... But looks like our freeways at home. They sure do. Call off the altitude, Sloan. One kilometer. In meters, Sloan. 600 meters. 500 meters. We're touching down in a forest of some kind, wasn't it? Let me know when we have ground contact. 200 meters. We must be getting close. The trees are towering over us. 100 meters. Get ready. Ground contact. Close, Jets. Still in one piece. We're in a forest. I've never seen anything like it. It towers way above us. And it's so green. Take air samples, Stuart. We'll call, Commander. How come you landed here, Austin? I didn't have any choice, Ruth. We weren't supposed to land on any planet, just observe. I know. We got caught in this planet's gravity field. That's what the commander meant by saying he had no choice but to land. And uh, thanks to your skill, Commander, we were able to do it. Well, one thing I can say for it... You certainly picked a remote spot. I don't think anyone saw us land. I hope not, Bonnie. Ruth and I saw a city on our way down. We made photos of it. I'll give Stuart a hand, Commander. These trees, they're, they're like our grass, but so much bigger. Do you suppose they give off oxygen? Uh, can I give you a hand, Stuart? Well, I'm just drawing some of the air into this test flask from the outside. Uh, now, to test it. Uh, write down what I find, Sloan. Fine. Nitrogen, 78.9. Uh-huh. Oxygen, 20.95. Hey, that's good. So far. Argon, 0.93. Carbon dioxide, 0.03. Very good. Water vapor, about uh, 2%. Maybe a little less. Oh, not very humid then, huh? No. There's some dirty stuff mixed up in it. Uh, minute particles of suspended... Uh, yeah. Carbon and sulfur. What we call smog back home. Well, buddy, they've got it here, too. But the air is breathable. Well, Commander Austin Baker will be glad to hear that. Can't think of anybody who won't be. You know, I can't tell whether there's bark on these trees or not. We're up too high in the spaceship to see. Ah, Stuart, what did you find? The air is very breathable, Commander. We won't need helmets or oxygen units to support us if we go outside. No life support systems required. None. What's that? Take your seats. What is it? I don't know, but fasten your seat belts. The ship is quivering. It, it may be an earthquake. If this ship falls over on its side, we've had it. Hey! 
rain. The sky was clear as we came through. Well, you can see for yourself. It's still clear above the trees. What kind of weather do they have here? It's ended. Stay in your seat, Ruth. You too, Bonnie. All of you. Weird. The ship has stopped shaking. Yeah, I know, Sloan. What do you make of it, Stuart? I don't know. The way that water started coming down, I thought we were in for a big one. I know. Shortest rainstorm I ever experienced. Me too. Oh, I guess it's safe enough now to unbuckle the seatbelts and leave the chair. Yeah. <laughs> you want Sloan and me to look around outside, Commander? Yeah, we'll have to sooner or later. The sooner the better, Austin. Take a life support system with you just in case. It's not necessary, Commander. Arms, yes, but we can do without the life support system. All right. But check the breathability of the atmosphere before you venture too far away. We will, Commander. Come on, Sloan. And keep in touch with us by radio and pick vision. We'll go, Commander. Now, coming, Stuart. We'd better stop at the armory first. Right. <clears throat> Laser pistols. Three grenades apiece. Well, that should do it. And I'll take an atomic rifle just in case. Okay, Sloan, that does it. The personal radio's working? Well, we'll soon find out. The Sloan to Commander Baker. Do you read me? Read you fine, Sloan. And the pick vision is good. Stuart and I are going out now. Right. Now keep in touch at all times and turn back if you're attacked. We want the inhabitants to know we're friendly. Right. We won't use weapons unless necessary. Use weapons only to protect your own lives. Wilco, Commander. Out. Well, Stuart, let's go. Air is as breathable as we said it was. Right. Uh, we'll make a circuit of the ship. Then head due north. Right. Let's go. From Sears, passion that fends off the storm, salutes the sunshine. Step out, military flair. These double-breasted trench coats get down to details. Choose olive green or khaki tan Dacron polyester and cotton, sizes 8 to 18. Another fashion winner, the new quilt trim sheared shoulder coat with self-belt. In chino beige polyester and cotton, sizes 6 to 16. Both coats come with a nylon lining. Fashion that fends off the storm, salutes the sunshine. In the coat department at most larger Sears retail stores. Light it, clean it, and love it during Sears Home Center Sale. With lighting buys that shine. Save $10 on four chandeliers with colonial, transitional, or country moods. Your choice, $29.99 each. And save over 20% on a 15-pound box of Sears laundry detergent. It removes more soil than the nation's leading detergent. So light it, clean it, and love it during Sears Home Center Sale till February 24th at most Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Can't believe you owe the IRS that much? Well, when things just don't add up, you can count on a Sears desk calculator to help you add up what you don't owe. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide, then read the figures two different ways. 12-digit display or tape printout. There's a two-memory system that helps ease multi-step problems. Plus, its many extras make it a great time saver. Sears two-memory desk calculator. Now cut $25, just $99.99 through March 10th at most Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. The spaceship Omega rests tail down in a forest of green fronds. The air is breathable on this strange planet, however, and Sloan Overton and Stuart McGill are on an exploratory trip. They're armed with laser pistols, grenades, and an atomic rifle as they make their way through the jungle of towering green trees. They are watched and listened to on a pick vision tube in the control room of the spaceship by Commander Austin Baker and the two women, Ruth Beatty and Bonnie Clare. Well, we, we, we should have brought machetes to hack our way through this stuff. Take more than a machete to cut through these trees. Chainsaws would be more like it. Oh, yeah. 
There's no bark on these trees. They've no trunks at all. They're green all the way to the ground. Yeah. What's this? A steel wall? Oh, it's, a, it's a metal of some kind. Well, uh, help me scale it. Can you reach the top? Okay. It's, uh, it's kind of flanged up here and almost a meter in width. And, hey. What do you see, Sloan? Well, it... It ends right down there, or, or begins. It, it begins there, and there's another wall across from this one. It's identical, and... Hey, wait a minute. There are, there are divisions here of, uh, of wood or something that looks like wood, and... Do, do you suppose this is a railroad track? I'll go to the end and try to get up there with you. Uh, uh, Commander Baker, uh, do you read me? Loud and clear, Sloan. Is the picture clear, too? Very clear. And the girls and I agree with you. It is a railroad track. Yes, I agree. For extremely large people, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, Stuart's coming into the picture now. Yeah. Oh, I, I see you made it all right. So that end down there, it has no bumpers. But you're right, Sloan. This must be a railroad track. And these are ties. Follow it. Uh, we'll go, Commander. Come on, Stuart. Uh, uh. Uh, there are signs of rust. Maybe this was abandoned. Oh, why was it ever put down in this jungle of green trees to begin with? I don't know. But it was constructed by a race of giants, that's for sure. Well, let's hope we don't run into any. Oh, man. Can you imagine how large their trains must be if this is just the track? No. And I don't uh, want to. How, uh, how far apart would you say the rails are? Oh, ten meters. About. We should have brought a tape so we could get accurate measures. Do I see the end of this track? Well, uh, you sure do. We see the end of it, too. What do you make of it, Commander? I don't know. That track begins nowhere and comes to an end nowhere. Doesn't make sense. Whoever put it down must have had a change of mind. Well, at least they didn't skimp on it. It's, uh, it's beautifully built. Even at this end, as well built as the other. I'll help you down, Sloan. Uh, no sweat. A slight jump ought to do it. Okay. Come ahead, Stuart. Sloan, Stuart, I think you'd better come back to the Omega now. Whatever you say, Commander. Uh, we'll go, Commander. If we keep that wall... Oh, I, I keep calling it that. Uh, that, uh, that rail to our right. We'll, uh, we'll wind up at the spaceship. Right. Let's go. I made a map of this area, what we've seen thus far. Good, Ruth. I don't know what good that'll do. Well, Bonnie, it at least can go in the log to show what we saw right after we landed. Well, it's all I did it for. I... Oh! Oh! Well, there it is again. Fasten yourselves in your seats, girls. Sloan, Stewart, take whatever cover you can. Another quake. It's a clear sky above the trees. Maybe we don't get... I was wrong. We get rain again. That was shorter than the other one. It's real strange. I, I can't explain it. This ship began to sway like crazy. If it goes over on its side, we've had it. I know, Stuart. Well, the ship is steady now. Yes. Take off the seatbelts. Uh-oh, strap them back on. Here we go again. This swaying is making me sick to my stomach. Well, if we fall over, you won't have that to complain about anymore. Well, we've lost the picture. Can you hear me? Stuart, Sloan, come in, please. Come in, please. Oh, uh, our radio's out, Stuart. Probably this downpour. I don't understand well, it. The sky's clear as a bell above the treetops. There's not a cloud in sight. I'm drenched. Uh, there's no shelter around, that's for sure. I don't understand it. What's going on? These earthquakes followed by short torrential rains. Oh, buddy, don't look at me for an explanation. I think we better get back to the spaceship. Uh, we turn south at the end of this wall, or track. Uh, Commander Baker, do you read me? The ship can't hear us. That means the pick vision is gone, too. Well, meaning the commander can't see or hear us. That's right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that? Where? I, uh... I thought I saw something moving off, uh... Off to the left. 
I don't see anything, Sloan. I don't either right now. Come on. Let's keep going back to the Omega. I can see the end of the wall ahead, Stuart. The track, Sloan. I see it, too. We turn south there. Do, 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 you, do you see what I see? Where? Oh, my God. Stuart, I... I, I don't know what it is. It's... It looks like a giant dinosaur of some kind. We'll take cover. I'll use the atomic rifle on it. It's a lizard or a reptile of some sort. It's gigantic, but nothing can survive this atomic rifle. You hit it, Sloan. It's, it's, it, it's not going down. Another hit, but, it, but it's coming this way. Use your grenades and your laser pistol. The atomic hits have only angered it. Can you see through the smoke? It's still coming toward us, Sloan. Maybe a blaster in this laser pistol. Sloan, run for it. The beast is still coming. Just a few more grenades. Stuart, Stuart, where are you? Over here, behind this tree. I can't see you. I'm right here, Sloan. Oh, my God! Can you hear me, Sloan? Stuart? I've checked the circuits, Commander. I can find nothing wrong. We still have no sound or pick vision, Ruth. How long has it been now? Exactly three and one half minutes, Blonnie. Well, they should have been back by now. Want me to check the entrance hatch? No, Ruth. Hey. Hey, here's our trouble, I think. A huh? fuse blown. Oh, I'll get an extra commander. Right away. Wonder what happened. The quakes? Well, maybe. But it's the first time. Here's a new fuse, commander. Ah, oh, thanks, Bunny. Now to try it. Sloan, Stuart, do you read me? Hey, we're getting a picture again. I hear you, Commander. Am I coming in? We hear you fine now. And we've got a picture, too. Sloan's gone. Gone? Sloan? What happened, Stuart? I... I don't know what it was. A, a dinosaur, a lizard, reptile, whatever. It was gigantic. We hit it with everything we had. The atomic rifle, laser pistols, grenades. All they did was anger the beast. It... It got Sloan? It had this long tongue and it... it it swallowed him whole. Oh, how horrible. Oh, it makes me sick. We see you clearly, Stuart. Where you are and all. Walk straight ahead and you'll be in the Omega within minutes. I can't see the spaceship from here. Yeah, but we can see you. Keep walking. I, I can't stop thinking of a Sloan. Keep walking. I am, I am. I, I can't see the spaceship. Well, it's probably hidden by the trees. Come straight ahead. The atomic rifle, the grenades, the laser pistols, they only infuriated the, the months. Keep walking, man. He's in a day. The atomic rifle is supposed to destroy anything. He said it was a dinosaur. Or lizard. Or a reptile. Whatever. It must have been gigantic to withstand a hit from an atomic rifle. What's he walking into? Stuart, what is that? I, I, I don't know. It's sticky. I, I walked right into it before I ever saw it. Stuart, look out. What is it? It has six legs. Shiny black. Look on its stomach. An hourglass of red. I, I, I can't get loose from the stuff. Use your last grenade and the laser pistol to defend yourself. Oh, it's like a huge giant spider. Yeah. I, I can't get loose. Stuart, I've got to help him. It's too late, Commander. The spider has stung him. Stuart, Stuart, can you hear me? He's dead. Oh. No, the spider... It, it, oh, I, I can't watch. He's gone. Stuart's gone. Uh, what kind of planet have we landed on? I... I don't know. Giants. All carnivorous giants. First Sloan, now Stuart. There are only three of us left. That's right. You, Ruth, and me. How do we get out of here? That's a good question, Bonnie. I don't know. Gravity forced us to land here, and gravity may keep us here. Oh, these giant creatures, they're impervious to our weapons. Nothing we do has any effect on them. Maybe... 
Maybe what, Austin? I was just thinking maybe Sloan and Stewart haven't died in vain. Maybe we can learn something from their deaths. Like what? Well, to keep away from these giant creatures, we must not antagonize them in any way with our weapons. What do you plan to do? We can't stay in the spaceship indefinitely, Ruth. It's only a matter of time before one of those creatures discovers the Omega. That's exactly what I was thinking, Bonnie. Well, then what's your idea, Austin? To find or, or dig a cave someplace. We'll live off the land as long as we can, but we can't stay here. Take your seats. Strap down. Oh, yes. Oh. Just another reason for leaving this ship. If one of these quakes should tip us over, we've had it for sure. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you looking for a nursing home? Well, here are a few tips. Start by getting a list of the licensed facilities in your area from your local health department. Find out whether they are certified to receive Medicare and Medicaid payments. Also, talk to your friends and talk to your neighbors who've placed a family member in a home. You see, it's important to visit a nursing home to check the facilities and the services. For example, food handling, patient care, in-service staff training, housekeeping, and patient activities. Now, before you sign an admission agreement, you read it carefully, including the fine print, and ask a lot of questions about what's included in the price. A number of nursing homes charge extra for such items as wheelchairs, air mattresses, and personal laundry. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. If you have a child with a handicap, we have some good news. And some very good news. The good news is there's a new law that guarantees your child the right to the special education he needs. Evaluation procedures conform to the corresponding requirements in the final regulation of Section 504. But here's the very good news. The term continuum, as with least restrictive environment, is commonly used by... You don't have to hire a lawyer to explain how this rather complicated new law can help your child. It is in accordance with specific performance criteria related to the program objectives. We can explain the law. In clear, simple language. Free. Information under sub-clause E of clause 1 of subsection B. The commissioner there... Just write Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. That's Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. A public service message on behalf of the United States Office of Education. <laughs> Commander Austin Baker of the spaceship Omega doesn't face an easy decision. He and the two women left on the spaceship Omega are doomed. So their only possible choice is to leave the craft and seek survival in a cave that they can either find or dig themselves. I don't know what good our weapons may be against the hideous creatures we may find, but well, being armed will make us feel better. Do you know how to use this atomic rifle, Ruth? Yes, Austin. Bonnie? We went through the same training with them as you did, Commander. Yeah, a training that never prepared us for this, unfortunately. Uh, laser pistols, grenades. Uh, if we have to dig a cave, we should have entrenching tools. Yeah, I thought of that too, Ruth. For you, for Bonnie, and for me. What about food? I've got vials filled with meal pills. At least we won't starve, Bonnie. Well, I guess we've got everything. Let's go. That's what I like about you, Austin. He closes the doors if he was coming back. <laughs> Who knows? We may. Oh. All set? Ready. Set as possible. Nothing outside. Come on. I'll take the lead. Follow me. Trees are even taller than they seem. Hold it. I see some of that sticky stuff Stuart got caught in. Where? Right ahead there. Any sign of that spider-like creature that got him? 
I don't see it. Oh, me neither. All right, follow me closely. I'll try to lead us around the stuff. It seems to be wet like. Uh, these trees are so thick. Keep your eyes open for that giant spider. Uh, don't worry. I am. Uh, we're nearly around the sticky stuff now. Oh, is, is that the railroad track ahead there? Yes. Uh, is that the same one we saw in the pit vision? The same. I don't know whether we'll find one, but keep looking for a cave. We've been walking nearly an hour and we're still in one piece. Well, that's something, Ruth. Wait. Cross down. Um, what are those things in the distance? I don't know, Bonnie. But they're walking in a line. They're following each other. Well, there must be... I've lost count of them. Well, they're huge. Oh, horrible things. Yeah, they're like... Well, at home, they were tiny insects called ants. See the mandibles and antenna? Oh, these are anything but tiny. Oh, they're so big. Edge back soon and see us. Oh, we were lucky we weren't attacked. Attacked? Ruth, we'd have been carried back to their nest and fed to their queen. What's this? Wait, it, it seems to be rubber of some kind. It goes up so high. Why, it's even higher than the trees. Is, is that material of some sort above the rubber? I think that's a canvas like cloth. At least it's not alive. And look there. Bonnie, don't go wandering off by yourself. There's there's round, shiny metal with something through it. Do you know what we found? What? I think it's a shoe, like a sneaker. An abandoned shoe? I think so. Look at the length of it. A sneaker-like shoe from some giant. And that material from the round eyelets, I, I guess those are laces. It's so big. We took photographs of a city on our way down. So Bonnie told me, Ruth. What, you think this is a shoe from one of the inhabitants? That's my guess. It's a pretty good one. I'll buy it. I, I, I think we'd better find a cave before we get stamped on. Oh, I'm for that. Follow me. What? Oh, I, I didn't say anything, Ruth. Well, at least we haven't been attacked by anything. Like poor Sloan and Stuart were. No, but stay alert, Bonnie. <gasps> oh, uh-oh. But there it goes again. Lie down. Bonnie, lie down before you're knocked off your feet. The earth is shaking. It's another quake. There's the rain again. Oh. Uh, we're in for a soaking. It's a deluge. Wait, wait, be still a moment. I heard gurgling. There must be an underground river beneath us. I can hear the water rushing through. I can feel it. I'm soaked. Well, we're on top of an underground river. I don't hear it anymore. Can we get up? The earth has stopped shaking now. That's strange. The sound has stopped. Uh, what did you say, Ruth? I asked if we could get up now. Oh, yeah, sure. <sighs> I don't understand it. Oh, I'm soaked through and through. I heard water flowing like a, an underground river. Didn't either of you hear it? Oh, I was trying to keep from drowning. Me too. Well, so was I, but I still heard it. Well, we'll, we'll try to find higher ground. Follow me. The trees are still dripping from that last downpour. Do you suppose we're in a rainforest, Ruth? I don't know. Maybe if I scaled one of those trees to see where we are. Well, how can you, Austin? There are no branches on these trees. I know, Ruth, but... Oh. Huh? Oh, no. They've spotted us. All three of them. Oh, what oh, are those things? I don't know, but they're gigantic. Oh, shiny and black. And look oh, at those mandibles. Like monstrous beetles. Oh. Use the grenades first. Oh. Take that, you hideous creatures. The grenades had no effect on them. Oh. Oh. Use it! Oh. I can't oh. oh. Neither can I! Oh. Yes! Oh. Oh. 
Frank, where yeah. are you? Um, backyard, water beetles all over the place. Did you get them? Yep. Yeah. Well, what the heck is that? Oh, piece of track. There's a dumb kid's tennis shoe. Dug on it. What else did that boy leave outside? No. Here's another one of his toys. Well, his mother's got some answering to do, believe me. Laura! All through, Frank? Yeah, I'm through. Would you come here? I want to talk to you. You know, it's just ridiculous. Are you all through fixing the sprinklers? The sprinkler timer, Laura. The timer was screwed up. The sprinklers work fine. Well, the timer then. You fixed it? I said I did. Now, look there. Where? On the table. Oh, Frank, how many times must I tell you not to put your shoes... Why, oh, it's Junior's sneaker. Mm-hmm. He's been looking all over for it. You know where I found it? Where? In the backyard. Oh, he'll be so pleased. Well, I'm not. You're not? Do you have any idea of how much these cost? What with inflation and What was it doing in the backyard? I don't know. All right, where's the kid now? Oh, play.